Sarah somewhere, are you, Sam? I think you so. Here? Okay. And yeah. Anna, who's Did here? Anna, feel free to unmute and join us all. Okay. Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teacher. It is the 8th of July. Um, and uh, we are... Uh, well, if you if you heard the early part, we were testing masks. Um, <laughs> we're all getting messages about how we're coming back to school or not coming back to school. And um, I, I'm going to quote Janet, who says she was quoting me. I don't remember saying it. But one thing we have control over is curriculum. Um, and maybe we do, maybe we don't. So that's sort of what we want to test tonight. So I've been, um, as I said in, in a couple of emails, um, I've been kind of showing very quickly this organized page of um, what a course might look like. So if you were going to teach a course using playlists, LRG playlists, that all kind of connect to Youth Voices and Now Comment and other good things, um, what would that look like? And I've invited these folks to be skeptical tonight. Skeptical from the point of view of, um, hey, that's great, but in my school, I have to work with five other teachers and there's no way I can get them on board. You know, that kind of um, real, real politic, does that make some sense? Um, I, I do want to do introductions for who's here now, others may come. Um, can you quickly introduce yourself? Just your, Yourself and your school, and maybe a bit about your students, because I think that's important. Um, and and let, let me start that off by saying um, she has a life and a family and everything else. And I, I work with her all the time. Jessica, are you still here? I don't see you on screen. Jessica Hernandez Spear, would you introduce yourself, please? I'm right next to you. Oh, I don't. Okay. Okay. There you um. go. She actually does live down the block. <laughs> Hi, Jessica Hernandez here. I teach in the Bronx. Um, this is, I'm coming up on year 22 or 23. Faster, faster. Go, go. Okay, I teach with Paul. We do a lot of connected learning. We teach over age under credited students, 18 to 21. A lot of recent arrivals, not, not super recent, three to five years minimum. Cool. We'll get back around to you. Jeff. I'm Jeff Deerking. I'm in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. I teach in Raytown. I teach um, under credit or what did you say? Overage undercredited uh, students uh, in a Missouri option program helping them get. Uh, I just say I teach at-risk kids and try to get them graduated. Chris Sloan. Hi, uh, my name is Chris Sloan, and I teach high school English, primarily composition and photography and media production at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. And, you know, the majority of the kids I teach actually go on to college or like a military academy or something like that. Cool. Rich, you'll have to, you could go for it. Yeah, Rich Novak, I teach uh, high school English in Fairfield, Connecticut. And, which is, you know, largely affluent public school, high school. Um, but there is actually a, a growing number of uh, near next door, um, you know, urban district. Like there's a city right next door, Bridgeport. Um, there, there is an influx of students coming in from there, um, which is a cool thing to have happen. Um, but I teach primarily 10th grade um, and sometimes seniors. Cool. So, um, and Janet? <laughs> Hi, I'm Janet Ilko. I teach at Health Sciences High School. Um, I work with our independent study program. And in the fall, I'll be back on site also working with kids that are behind or needing some extra support. So we're kind of combining that program back into the high school. Where in the world are you, Janet? Oh, San Diego, California. Emily. Hi, I'm Emily. Um, I'm kind of in between teaching positions right now, but I've worked um, with Paul as a TC with the New York City Writing Project um, this last year at DeWitt Clinton up in the Bronx. Christina. 
Hi, Christina Cantrell. Um, I work at the National Writing Project and I'm logging in from Philadelphia. Cool. Anna. Hi, I'm Anna Main. I teach in Berkeley, California. I teach, uh, well, not so recent arrivals. Um, students have been here for, yeah, three to five years also. Um, 11th grade English and AVID. And what is AVID? Sorry. You've said um, I think it stands for Advancement via Individual Determination or something like that. I don't even know what it stands for. <laughs> um, it's a national like program. It, it's uh, sort of like a student support class. And they typically start in middle school and try and have um, kids cohorted all the way through. It's, it's like, like about social emotional learning. Or it's more about, um, yeah, some social emotional stuff. It's a lot about advocacy and organization. And like hmm. being at a younger age. to have underrepresented students attend college. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically. Yeah, a lot of first gen, um, I mean, all first gen, that's not the population I was with. And I taught seniors, so basically the class, you know, that at that age, they're literally applying to college, so that's what we did. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry to slow down on the rapid introductions, but I'm glad to have learned that <laughs> about what you do. Mr. Reed. Hey. Oh yeah, hey everybody, uh, Reed, AKA Sam, Reed the third, and I teach here in Philadelphia at the U School. I teach kids to read, write, and make sense of the world. I primarily teach um, ninth and 11th grade, and I'll be teaching more ninth graders this coming year. Uh, and um, yeah. Cool. Karen. Glad to be here. Great. I also teach uh, ninth and 10th grade um, a uh, multi-age grouping combination of ninth and 10th graders. Um, but this year we're gonna um, separate the ninth grade um, from the 10th grade um, so that we can follow them, so that we can be a tighter team of teachers taking care of that uh, cohort of 120 um, as opposed to a cohort of 240. I teach at Harvest Collegiate High School in uh, Manhattan. Um, and my name is Kieran. Joe. Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Dillon. I teach uh, creative writing and humanities at Gateway High School in Aurora, Colorado. And uh, what else? I guess that probably suffices. I'm with the Denver Writing Project. Joe and I um, are going to publish our emails later. Um, we have a pamphlet ready to talk about who adopts courses and who doesn't adopt courses. Um, anyway, it's been a great dialogue today, um, but not only with Joe, with other people as well. Um, but, um, and I, Joe, before you got here, I said, you said, what's the protocol tonight? And I was like, a little, not sure. But I did say I'm going to start this way, and I'm going to start this way. So here's here's how I want to start. I want to start by showing, um, by saying what for me is the bottom line of all this, and why we on Youth Voices started building curriculum in the first place, right? So I kind of want to say that, um, and it was because people, teachers, administrators, went on to Youth Voices and saw kids work. And they said, oh my God, how did you get them to do that, right? And so we wanted, so that's sort of, so we, we started collecting our stuff and, and then we started thinking about, could we somehow put it next to the, the work as well, right? And it's absolutely not totally there, but I, I wanted to start with Luis Balso last week presented these oral histories, right? And after last week, I did take the oral histories and I'm clicking on it and I hope it goes there. Sorry, I just have to click in the right place. Why isn't it going there? Oh. There we go, found it. Let me close this so I can see what's going on. So this is kind of, so even though she is not using LRNG, um, she kind of organized her curriculum like a playlist in some ways. Um, a lot of people were saying, wow, I really like how you have that organized for the kids. It, it's like a playlist in that it's organized and it's also student facing, right? 
So, so you have the youth's work here on the left side. And then here on the right side, we can see what school that kid comes from. We can go here and find out more about the, the youth if we want to. Um, but also we have, and I have to keep refreshing, I don't know why. But we also have here a link to this, this map here links to her curriculum, right? So another youth could come in here or a teacher could direct the youth to come in here and kind of do the same thing in some way. Um, whoops, <laughs> sorry. So that for me is the bottom line. And let me just get some thoughts about everything, I, that introduction from anybody. I wanna encourage, I, I don't wanna have to go around, so please be bold and jump in. Well, here's what I like. <laughs> Good. Um, <laughs> there's all kinds of resources out there, you know, especially since COVID. Uh, there is no shortage of, it's an avalanche of people saying, you know, use this, use that, that kind of thing. But what's different about it is it's actually the, the resource lives by the students that are actually producing the stuff. And to me, that's like a fundamental difference that's actually like really intriguing. Any other yeah. first thought? Yeah, go ahead. I, I would agree with that. I think I've been, I don't know if other people experienced this. I was like inundated with emails from all these different like tech companies and educational platforms when we first went online, like you should do this, you should do that, check out this cool thing. And I didn't look at any of it because I was very overwhelmed. And I think when Louise, her name's Louise, right? Also, yep. Louise. Yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when she showed that project, I was blown away because I teach a similar population of students. And I was like, I want to do this. And the fact, and like what you just said, Chris, um, seeing the student work and then having the curriculum right there, I, I think I'd be more likely to try on something like that than to have something emailed to me from a stranger. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I, I see the end product and I see um, like how I, how, how it could look if I, if I did something similar. So, yeah. I, I'm gonna jump and ask more kind of like a question, like how was that uh, a playlist uh ish you know develop like like from the developer like did they look at lrg as a playlist protocol and then created uh their work i'm, I'm just curious yeah i i we we should really ask her but what i will say is that she developed some playlists um with us in 2016 as part of a grant that we did. Okay. We, we, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, and then after that, we, she and I developed um, a, a, a several playlists that are a wonderful piece of curriculum that we need to rethink in some ways about language and, and, um, and change um, that that's so yes. So, but, but, and, or, She's just really good at organizing curriculum. So, you know, I mean, we learned yeah, from chops, her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, her playlist chops are, are developed. So it makes, and again, because it, it's student facing, it makes it accessible for students. But then teachers can also look at it and like, oh, like um, she said, oh, I can do this as well. Like, it's cool. And, that, and that's like how, as we were talking recently, oh, in the digital, uh, in the digital discourse uh, space, mm -hmm. um, uh, Joe and I we were talking like how we got acclimated to using like um, you know using youth voices and it was like by it, by me being introduced to Dawn who had used who had developed a playlist around like the hate you give and then like oh I was inspired and motivated to, to um, kind of riff off of that remix. All right, the other place I was going to and, and all I thought of was all places to begin. But I do want to say, um, Jessica Hernandez Spear and I have been working for, she said three, maybe it could be three. Um, and we do build our, our curriculum. And Jessica, you want to just kind of talk off the cuff about how you think about building your curriculum each cycle around playlist? You're looking at me funny. Um, well, the first thing I think of is, uh, 
is Paul going to be around or not? Because <laughs> uh, he can uh, do so much on the fly to, you know, just fine tune things in a way that if he's not there, I have to be really, there's a lot more planning involved and uh, <laughs> if, but I always try to think that he's not going to be around. So um, I have to start with some playlist that can be built on as students enter the class because uh, we often have kids come in. We, we admit, I don't know what that's going to be like this year, but normally we admit all the way up to October 31st in the fall and all the way up to March 31st in the spring. So um, you can have people rolling in up to the day before that. And the first cycle, we, we, we do 10 week cycles, which are essentially quarters. So you're supposed to be able to get one English credit in 10 weeks. Someone can show up week eight and you have to be able to say, well, if you apply yourself and here is the work we've been doing, if you can catch up, you can get your credit in two weeks. That doesn't often happen, if ever. But um, I, I look to see what can be built on fast, what can be built in a rolling way. And then usually by cycle two, I look at who I have and try to see what level they're at and what playlist would be appropriate and what's going on in the world and try to match those elements as best. And sometimes Jessica will find a playlist and, and I know there's, it gets stuck in the third activity. We need to fix that before we can use that. We can use it, but yes, that's the kind of, um, kind of play together we do. Right. Um, but it's been fascinating to watch you kind of organize your curriculum around playlists, right? Like in the first two weeks, they're going to do this one, then they're going to do this one and this one. Um, right. So, and then also think about what have I done in the last 20 years that is able to be adapted into a playlist. You know, like the things I have, you know, I have this accordion folder full of, you know, like, let me put that away for, you know, in case I ever want to use it again, I haven't often used it again, but now some of the things I'm starting to look for and say, oh, that would work, you know, in playlist form. So. And I'm thinking, Paul, like playlists, I like how it's organized so in those units, like these two weeks, these two weeks, these two weeks, and then doing some overarching books is kind of how I'm looking at presenting this to my English team at the site. So for example, in looking, if I was gonna pull a playlist like um, the Black Lives Matter, and we read um, how to be anti-racist, or we're doing a lot of work around that right now with kids. And then the, the brand new, I'm reading it downstairs, which of course why I'm looking around. But I mean, coming up with a novel necessarily. But is it how, how to be an anti race? Is it stamped? Is that the one? The Yeah, stamped. Okay, so okay. Stamped. I mean, the, the teachers are reading, like we're reading this one. That's why I was getting confused. I'm reading this yeah, one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, we're doing stamped. I'm reading that right now. And one of our discussions is that going to be a book that all of our students read um, across history. And so then I'm looking at where does playlist fit into that piece? Where does, um, and in kind of with that view. And I don't have any idea how long it look, but that's where yeah. we're kind of going. Why don't we hear for, from some others at this point, this introductory point? You, you know what I, what I like about the playlist is that there's like a medley of choices like for students as you go along. That's the best part of it. And I think that's really important, especially in this moment of George Floyd and, and Black Lives Matter because um, number one, it's like, what do we do with it? Well, you have a choice, you know, and if you follow it, you can do that choice giving. And I think that's really important right now. Like it's just giving the option at least to, to let's go down that road. I want to go down that road. Um, so I, I appreciate that that world is there, but then I love that, you know, for the, you know, there's always that student in your class who's just like, I want the old school English class. Like, that's just like, I just want that. You know what I mean? I like, just give me the Shakespeare. 
here, give me the whole kabam, you know, give me iambic pentameter. And you got some, you have some uh, annotations there for that, you know, like go down the road of Macbeth, go down the road of Glass Menagerie, which are like, I love that because that's like literally in my curriculum. And 10th graders love Glass Menagerie in Fairfield, Connecticut. I don't know why. It's like weird. So we're the what we're talking about is playlists in general, the idea of a playlist and how it works it, and our response to it, or in particular, Louise's. Where do you want to go, Karen? Yeah. Say it again? What, what do you want to talk about? Jump in. Um, I'm, so I love working with playlists. Um, and um, in the fall, I'm going to, I'm teaching a poetry course um, it, uh, and I already have a sense of some of the playlists that I want to use from LRNG um, and um, how I would... Um, can, I, can I ask yeah. you on that? Um, do you also have a sense of what's not there? <laughs> what's not there is... Um, uh, What's not there is two things. One is um, uh, for it, it is um, like a teacher, like as a teacher, I have to, like I'm thinking first of my kids. The fact that the playlist is, um, the, um, curriculum is organized and I helped to organize some of it, helped to create some of it. So it's in me. Um, uh, and then other curricula are from colleagues, um, well organized. So that enables me to um, think first about the kids. Like in the fall, I'm thinking it's going to be really important to have a trauma informed, um, emotionally responsive practice. Um, and um, that's why I'm thinking of doing poetry um, because. It offers a lot of choice. They don't. The kids don't have a lot of choice in their lives right now. Um, uh, but um, so two things. One, I I um, I want to the I see the playlists as um, uh, like vehicles. They're often um, not necessarily. It, um, many of them, even ones that are thematic or um, based on a particular text, are um, uh, are like vehicles. Um, I guess I'm all over the place. What I'm saying is, um, you're hitting on w wise things, but go ahead. Yeah, what do you mean by vehicles, though? Uh, they're. Um, many of the playlists are medium based for medium based education they're materials based meaning the material is uh, um, like a, a skill they're skill based so annotating or um, uh, writing um, personally so that's good uh, so that um, uh, so that you can think about the um, kids who are coming into you knowing that the um, playlists are going to help you, uh, uh, that you'll be able to um, manipulate them or um, uh, focus them thematically or text-wise on something that's responsive to the kid's um, emotional so uh, situation. Could I ask or suggest that in, in, in what you just said there, though, we could, we could get more explicit about this playlist is about introducing yourself, but it's also about learning how to use Google Docs, learning how to get feedback from other people in mail comment, learning how to use um, mm. video to record yourself. Like the material yeah. stuff that you're talking about, we could be a little more explicit about and think through um, in a curriculum. What are the kids' needs? And then, um, which parts of um, the work that um, the which parts of the work, like the uh, annotating, the um, 
recording your voice, which parts of the English teachers work, which parts of the um, LRNG playlists uh, um, serve that particular need of a student. So, and then saying, so it's like um, the playlists say what to do, but they don't make explicit, explicit why. And that why would be good to put in one sentence and um, to use a metaphor um, uh, so that it sticks. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, so the, for the um, now comment, the purpose of it is to get to know how each other think about things or to um, collaborate in making a richer understanding together of a text. Mm -hmm. Cool. There's um, one wanna, other thing. Go ahead. And then we'll open it up to others. Please jump in. Yeah. I, um, I want my colleagues whom I introduced the um, playlists to, to not have even a moment of thinking, oh, this is a canned curriculum. Per and perfect segue to Joe. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, part of what Joe and I went back and forth on, and, and I, I think the metaphors are worth exposing here, <laughs> maybe, um, is that, that I talked a little bit about how in my own teaching with playlists, I become more like a waiter than the chef, even, the, even if I was the chef who, who made the food, right? <laughs> but, but there, there, but there, there are different menus and kids are working on different things and I'm going around and helping them understand them. And, and often I also, there are playlists, the example I use is um, Casey's um, playlist around um, argument is everywhere. You know, it's like, I don't totally, that, that, that's not my vision, um, but I love teaching that playlist be, because it's not my vision. But I trust it because I know where it comes from. So, so yeah, th that's how it's not canned. But I'm not sure how a colleague can see that. So, well, I guess yeah, the thing I'm sitting here thinking about too. I guess I got two things that makes me think about, which is one that um, for me in my practice, I feel a part of a larger sequence. And so, you know, when a when a kid is in a sophomore English class with me there are a set of skills that a sophomore is supposed to take away from theoretically from, you know, sophomore English. Let's get better at these things. And, and so if I was trying to incorporate playlists, I'd have to have some eye on, Hey, these are the three or four things, you know, these are the things that as a system, you know, this thing works from K through 12 theoretically. And so at this step in the process, we got to be focused on these things. And I, and I mean, you have to balance that with being flexible and nimble and, and dealing with the kids you have in front of you, but you also kind of have to keep your eye on the ball, um, which I feel like sometimes I look at that wall of playlists and I get sort of overwhelmed by um, how does any of this relate to what I'm supposed to be doing? Um, and I, And I mean that not in like a, you know, there's some dictator telling me, but like I recognize that like these are good skills for kids to have, and and I don't necessarily want to just sort of throw them at a wall and say, pick, and we'll come away with some skills. I want to have there be some shaping to that. Um, and then I was thinking about your metaphor of like I maybe I'm the waiter, and I'm not the chef, but I I don't know maybe the playlists are the recipes, right? And so it's like I'm I, I don't know that. And this may just be my sort of pig-headed personality, but like, it's real hard for me to imagine just letting kids use playlists that I'm not deeply involved in and like changing and adapting and saying, wait, we're going to do it. I'm going to make XP2 like this and we're not going to do that and I'm going to add this to it. I mean, maybe I'm just a meddling person, but it, it feels like um, I'd want to have a, a much partially to sort of honor the fact that, hey, I do have sort of I'm a link in a chain here and I got to make sure that my link is, is covered. Oh, uh, Rich's cat just, just came in and he's a link. I'm uh, it's your cat. I know this is. Pounds. 
Okay. So yeah, I, I'll, I'll trail off. I, I, my thoughts. No, I, you know, this is the thing though about, I can't imagine a, a classroom like playlists. I would love it. I am probably though going to have to fight for it in a district that's a little more conservative or a little more traditional. And I think, you know, when we think about like, what is our role? Like, you know, I, I am, I am the teacher that I totally know. I, I want to let go as much as possible. And I can't, you know what I mean? Cause they won't let me let go. You know what I mean? Like, and I, I say, I mean, like, that's the whole thing. And the idea that there's these other things out there that other people have done that you're connected to is brilliant. But I mean, here's the, you know, the rub is that there are people that, you know, don't want that. There are people like that, number one, don't want it. Number two, you know, there's this weird perverted kind of, it's not an equity, but equality, where it's not equity that matters. But if you're not doing equal to what Ms. Krabappel's doing down the hall, I have rights to shut your thing down. So if you're going down that Black Lives Matter route, hmm, let me find this way to shut this down, you know? Those are good problems. Yeah. Do you have your hand up? Yeah, because I was going to um, <laughs> check on that. Just talk. So, Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our, our, is, I don't know if I was feeling like there's a tension around, like, is there too much, is there rigor in the playlist kind of thing? And even as I was looking at uh, particularly the, uh, the more current topical stuff, like, it, to, to me, it reads tight. And I told, uh, I, I, you know, I didn't, have, I haven't had time to like really dig into it deeply, but anyway, I'm, I'm real curious. Like, is it a question of rigor? Is it like the rigor's not there, or, um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious, Rich, uh, to hear you play. Yeah, on well, that. it's that perceived. Thanks, thanks for clarifying. Like, it's that perceived rigor. You know, like I, you know, teaching in an affluent community. You know, there's this perceived rigor, and then there's like real rigor. And when I've done things like real rigor, like where you're doing things like research, play, you know, like I've seen students do amazing things that I'm also seeing at the university where I'm, you know, doing graduate studies. And I'm like, wow, that's a high school kid doing that in my classroom right now. And I, I didn't plan that to happen per se. I just facilitated it through things like playlists. It's more of though, you know, what is the curriculum, the curriculum's there for a reason in certain respects. And that curricular reason sometimes is to keep stuff out of the curriculum. You know what I mean? Like, and, and there's like, that's the, that's the rub. Like, how do you, how do you get it in? And I, I think what's brilliant about the playlist is that it gives that choice where it's like, you don't have to go down the road of, you know, getting critical. You could also just do the more traditional playlist route. Anybody else want to bring up an issue before we look at the proposal? <laughs> I'm just wondering about labeling. Like, mm -hmm. how are these playlists labeled? Are standards being, I, I, I hate to say that, but I mean, no, that's often the- say it. I, think, um, I think both it, Jeff and it, Rich from different perspectives were saying they need standards attached. But yeah, ahead. I think they do. And then also, mm -hmm. I mean, could, these other playlists that are focused on um, topics like activism, could they also be labeled like this playlist looks at annotating literature? Mm -hmm. So that's very clear so that you have that notion of often what's perceived as rigor to many administrators. Well, and, and I, to back you up there, I mean, I feel like that's a, it's a slick way to avoid some of that stuff that Rich is talking about. I've been teaching, literature I wasn't supposed to teach for, or, or stuff I wasn't supposed to teach for a long time, but I just don't focus on the, the what, I focus on the skill. So, oh, you want me to teach them how to do, think critically? Yeah, we happen to be reading these things. I'm not teaching them those things. I mean, if they happen to get ideas from them, great, but I'm just teaching these skills, you know? Um, and I think, yeah, I think, I, I, I hesitate to talk about standards too, but I think that becomes the linchpin to at least sort of sneak it past the guards, you know, be like, yeah, it's just a cake. There's no file in this thing. Just, yeah. you know, don't worry about it. It's just a cake. <laughs> well, you know, and the, the whole like thing, you know, standards, it, it's, it's like, 
I got you. Jeff. Okay, number one, standards, we got a problem there to begin with. Like, let's talk about that, but another time. But just like, I, you know, in my school, we have like, we come with these academic expectations that we want students to adhere to, kind of like our own standards. And there's only six of them, which I like. There's a, you know, and it's like, I can easily say two of these standards standards are happening in that playlist you know and, and you like if, if i were to bring these to my district that's how you do it you say like this playlist can knock off these yeah. two we, we, we joe joe go ahead you wanted to get in there yeah. yeah sure so a couple things i think one of the things uh like just on the metaphor to jump back to the metaphor the notion of like designer versus waiter right and i think i think number one i do think that designer is more important of a stance than a metaphor Right, but I still think the waiter metaphor is useful. But I also think like when Sam talks about designing Ratchademic Tuesdays, he's a designer. That's not a metaphor. He is designing learning experiences that have resonance with his students. It's not like oh, let's imagine the teacher as a designer. No, he's designing learning experiences. And similarly, I think the one of the things I think is, first of all, there's a billion things that are fascinating about Youth Voices Live anyway. When I was introduced to it, it was through a presentation where I think you and somebody else, maybe it was, Chris may have been remote, but the idea that you were looking at youth interaction on Youth Voices Live, and what I took away from it was you were comparing the way youth interacted on Youth Voices Live, and, and the comparison I took was, let's compare that to how adults interact in any comment section, or YouTube, or Facebook or anywhere. And it's clear that like the work being done with youth at Youth Voices Live, like far, like it sets a higher bar for discourse than the internet at large, which is easy to say, but also some very specific things in places where like, you know, real like mainstream media channels have an opportunity to curate or moderate. And Youth Voices Live is still like far superior to what you'd see in the wilds of the internet. So I guess, I think that's fascinating and it what, what drew me initially. And then I think about playlists in terms of the notion of curation, right? I can point to other teachers' designs and if I know a subset of them well enough, then I can act as a curator. Again, that might be a metaphor, that's but I think metaphor. that's a more apt metaphor in the mm -hmm. sense that I'm designing what I want people to see and experience. And, you know, because there are some playlists I'm just totally unfamiliar with, can't curate them. And in some, I say, oh, I love this. I've used it five times with youth and, and a couple times I cut this and a couple times I cut that. Um, I guess my final thought on the course adoption, that just sort of like calls to mind a lot of high school and middle school teachers, you know, wanting to stick with what's working for them and in their interactions with youth, like Sam being potentially hypothetically asked to give up Ratchademic Tuesdays because somebody wants to, you know, get him to try this new course. To me, that's just, that is, that's one of the things that course adoption flags for me. But the positive, like, the positive way I can frame that is if you look at like open work on the internet, like DS106, where they say, oh, here's DS106, open course, probably probably uh, like inspires lots of design across the internet. And then there's some people who explicitly say, oh, I'm teaching an exact section of this. So I think that's one of the best potentials that doesn't raise to mind for me, Sam being told not to teach Ratchademic Tuesdays, right? Because I think that when, I probably said enough. <clears throat> well, just to say what we want to do is get, get those Tuesdays into a playlist, right? And I don't know if that's possible, but it might be. But Anna wanted to ask something or wanted to jump in. Did you not, Anna? Sorry. No, I did. I, I and I, I apologize if this is like old news to people. Playlists are still kind of a new thing for me. Um, so I'm just wondering about like when you give students a lot of choice. Um, and the, I'm like in my, I just finished my second year of teaching, so I don't know what I'm doing. But I, I would not feel confident in being able to identify gaps in student learning or understanding, whether it's like, con like whether it's skills or act like concepts that we're discussing, if they're turning in so many different things. I think I, an assessment is like a has been a big question mark for our, I'm sure it is for lots of people um, as we look 
towards the future. So if people have thoughts about that, I'd be really curious. Um, like, how do you know that your students are learning all the, yeah, I don't know what I'm even saying, but like, how do you identify gaps in students learning if they're one kid's turning in an interview, one kid's writing a blog post? It, it would be hard for me to, to see that they're all learning the things I want them to learn, I guess. You can't um, be the only one asking that question, but yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Anna, I think you bring up a good question. That's why earlier I, I raised like the tighter, like the tighter mm -hmm. the playlist is or whatever the ex experience is that like you, you clearly, um, kids and you clearly can see what skill they're doing, the better. And also the tighter means that they can go through it in like uh, a shorter time frame, And so it's not a, it's not a wasted, is not a wasted endeavor, but it's also tight, and so that you're able to they're able to get that feedback loop going uh, quickly. Mm. Now, if it's like like you say, but I think your 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 point around like less is more is also important as well, and because uh, it it just makes it more easily for you to manage and for kids to manage, and particularly like you say, you're just like new to teaching. And even if you're not new to teaching, like less is more. So I, I, I feel you, I feel your angst. Yeah, and I, I mean, that's something that Jessica, Joe, really, Sorry. Joe really hit me uh, between the eyes of that idea of, you know, you got to become a designer and you're designing the experience. And I think that goes to kind of what, what Reed's saying. And then ultimately what you, are trying to get kids to develop for you is artifacts that show their skills. And so then that becomes the solution to the, like, what did you get out of this? Well, I have a, I can, I can show it to you. Like, I, you know, if Anna did this, I, it all sort of sinks together. You know, you end up sort of saying, you can do this because here's the artifact of you doing it. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we walk through the process. And so you, you have this, but, but I, you're making a good point. <laughs> you know, I, I oh, think- I, Rich, can I get, I, I think Jessica I, wanted to say something. Did you, at least you oh, leaned- Oh, I was just gonna say, oh, okay. a few choices is enough to feel like I have a little control over this. Um, too many choices, yeah, shut down completely. Like, ah, uh, I don't know. You know, like too much information, saturation, two to three, three max is usually, and that's, you don't want, I would say you wouldn't want more than that because then the divergent assessment, you know, like how many different ways can I look at this one skill and how can I make sure that it's, you know, two to three you can play with. That's all I was saying. What, what I would add to that in, in our circumstance at, at Pulse is that you, you were describing those um, cycles, cycle one, cycle two, a, a, a student disappears for three weeks and then comes back in cycle two, we're able to say, oh, this is where you were in that playlist you could pick up there. And then that student's doing something different. So just the, that sort of connection. And given, given our current realities, I think that that will be happening even more, right? But Yeah, that cycling idea. Uh, you know, at first when Jessica described that, um, it seemed, you know, if I were, if this were this time last year, I would say that's a really, seems like a really crazy kind of uh, management problem, you know. But now the more I think about it, uh, when we think about the different scenarios that are going to play out, um, there are going to be, you know, we could think we're going to be face to face. And then within a couple of weeks, when we thought we were going to be face to face, we're going to be online. Or there are going to be, you know, some people are going to be quarantined. And, and so what she's describing actually is, you know, that's what's going to happen. And, and I guess my thing to Anna is, um, you know, I can only do one thing at a time with my students. <laughs> you know, I don't do well when there's more than one thing going Chris on. Chris is very so, limited in his no. <laughs> you, you know, there's so many variations. But when it comes to playlists, okay. you know, we're, gonna, we're all going to do this thing. Uh, now, maybe later on in the year when they're comfortable, they can, I can say like, oh, here's a couple choices. But just for my sanity, uh, we're going to do this thing together because that's how the peer structure is going to work 
when we break up. Um, that's, you know. Well, make no part. mistake, that's not easy, that, that time, you know, like someone rolling in two weeks before the end of the cycle is uh, way less than optimal. It's just, right. it's reality, you know. And, right. and, and I'm, I'm saying that's yeah. my new reality, which is, you know, this time last year, I would have thought I would never encounter something like that. But I think that's what we're all going to do. Yeah. Um, and uh, the last thing I think that Anna's comment made me think about was, um, how do you see the gaps in learning? with the kids. And I think that's where this last year, what really was successful for me was when once a week, everybody got together synchronously. But then after that, people signed up for slots to let's do smaller groups with me. Um, and let's you read through your stuff. And there's, there's no more than three is what the students decided, like, we can't do more than three students at a time. And so we met you know, face to face, all together synchronously once a week. And the other three classes during the week were smaller groups of people that I was in those things. Now, if that's the new normal, I think I can get it so that uh, people can do that without me. But that's kind of how I operated this past spring. Yeah, quick sidebar. Is anybody else, whenever they talk about, you know, kids are going to be in on Monday and Tuesday and, and then remote on Thursday and Friday. Does, they, it's, does anybody ask, like, who's going to be teaching those remote kids because I have other kids on Thursday and Friday? You know? Exactly. <laughs> There's, it's a labor of love. How to, to work with the kids who can't come in. And no, we'll have kids every, every you'll day. you have kids in front of you too, right? Yeah. So... Yeah, I mean, and why doesn't be, anybody ask that obvious question? <laughs> I don't get it, but yeah. No, we've, we've asked it, and even our principals, okay. asked, but the district is, you know, they're blindsided. They, they're trying to figure it out. Um, yeah, so I, don't, we, I don't want to go in that, but yeah, go ahead. Joe flagged a really good tweet about this, though. I'm going to share that in the chat. Okay. I wanted to say one more thing about course adoption. Please. Um, if I can uh, get, um, it, if I can, if the course, um, as one sees it on uh, LRNG or Youth Voices, um, mm -hmm. uh, has um, skills, it, uh, so um, front loaded. So if it says, so where it says, if you go down to, yeah. So mm -hmm. um, introduce yourself would be changed. I mean, that's student facing, but it needs a teacher facing um, okay. thing. For starting an inquiry, yeah, it needs a teacher facing. Um, annotating literature and writing about literature are already um, teacher teaching, teacher facing. But it, um, like I, I can collaborate, like it's gonna be a lot of collaboration um, with colleagues. So if, um, if we come up with ideas together, it, um, my colleagues and I, and then, and I see, oh, we, so I would teach, I would have them annotate, or I would have them, I would teach the writing about literature skill. Then I can deploy these play this um, this these these playlists um, without a, as far as course adoption as a whole I would hesitate to um, I don't know it's just scary to think of um, how uh, colleagues would feel um, uh, their space is infringed upon and they would want to slap it down. Yeah, there are people in this in this call right now who would want to slap it down too and, and you guys should. I I the I do want to make the argument that the the intention here is that we would have am I still here? Yeah. 
Am I still sharing the screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay, the green went away. Sorry. Anyway, the intention here is that it looks complete for the administrator or somebody looking at it and, and adding the standards or the skills that are uh, trying to be achieved, clearly we need to do um, to achieve that. But at the same time, um, there could be other playlists added to each of these. Yet, the I, so I, here's what I want to say. I think Sam, you said it most clearly, or something about quick, clear, two weeks of work. Um, that's what a playlist represent. I think that's really important, but I think it's also important that they connect to bigger things that are happening as well, right? Across the whole semester. So being able to picture that in some way is the intention here. So one of the things, if I yeah. could just jump in, um, please. just as you're showing this, right? And again, this may be me just naming some of my familiarity with some of my favorite playlists, but also the interaction I see on Youth Voices Live, yeah. right? Because I agree. I mean, I think that this as something that would, would blow some early career teachers' minds, just does. And they, of course, would have a critical lens on certain things. You know, and I could list a few things that I would think would pose a challenge for an early career teacher or whatever. But I think when I see the, the Spark Inquiry with Questions playlist, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's just like fundamentally just such a nifty piece of curriculum. And if we just looked at it, that would have its own merits that are unassailable. And still what people wouldn't see is how cool Youth Voices starts to look when a bunch of kids start posting what they're researching and asking other kids for help. And to me, when that happens, it's like, it's like a different site almost. I mean, which isn't to say that it doesn't have a vast potential every single day, but when that happens, I'm always like, oh, we can stop whatever we're doing in my class and pay attention to the fact that there's a bunch of kids across the country asking for help with their research. And if they're Chris's class, and Chris's class has done a really good job of introducing their, their projects and all they're really asking for are like credible sources. I mean, to me, I can, I can usually make four days out of that. And sometimes it makes an impact on youth voices. Like sometimes they interact, but usually there's like, that's just some, that's sort of like under the, under the surface stuff. So could I ask a, a more existential question? Like, is this worth doing or not? <laughs> if I can ask it like that. Uh, is organizing the playlist like this worth it? Uh, let me just- I think it's yeah. really valuable and here's why. We don't know in the next month what things are gonna look like, right? And for me to be able to look at the playlist and say, I know that I'm going to have to make some decisions mid-August, right? I think what we're dealing with now and even today with the politics of like, you have to be full time, full on board to get federal money. I mean, things are changing by the minute, right? But we all know we're gonna have to be online. So my long answer is when you have it delegated like introduction, this, that, that allows me as the teacher to be able to say, okay, at this point, I can pull this playlist right here for what I'm doing with this group of kids and or and put it into the piece it also allows other teachers when you look at that to be able to say i can embed this in a piece of curriculum right it, i don't know if it would stand alone in and of itself like i'm not sure that teachers most teachers are not going to have i don't feel as much flexibility as we did in the spring right there's going to be a bunch of people saying you need to do this now and this piece and then this piece i think this particular group, a lot of us are in a situation where we're working with kids who are outside of the fringe, right? And not in the standard piece. But when I think of, of Chris, right? And he's going to have his kids, his kids class and his expectations for those kids are going to look a little bit different than, and Rich's kids than my kids or Jeff's kids, right? I mean, I like the organization because we can all then look at that and say, this fits in my need. You know, when I explain this to my friends and administrator friends as we're trying to think about what could it look like, I kind of, the funny thing is a couple 
months ago, I pitched this kind of idea to somebody who was gonna be on the committee that's actually meeting today about how they're gonna reopen, you know? And what's nice now, thank you, Paul, is that like I now could just send them this link and say, yeah, so this is what it could look like if we mm -hmm. went down this road, you know? Mm -hmm. So yes, it's valuable. I would, uh, like it's incredibly valuable, but I would, um, uh, I would um, not necessarily show my colleagues the um, course as it is it, um, so gelled on the screen. And instead I would say, oh, um, there's a playlist for that. Um, uh, I love your idea. Um, I have a way that we can do it in class, in person, and then online. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, notice you had a different audience than Rich did, but <laughs> yours was your your peers, your colleagues. But yeah, um, yeah. Um, but also, I, I did want to say that um, you mentioned that you're you're going to do a poetry course, and and you mentioned you know which playlist you want to use, but there are like I don't know six, eight, I don't even know um, that are really lovely and wonderful. You did some of those, um, like building a, a more clear structure for that poetry course so that the choices are clear. It's more about the choices being clear than it is about the requirements being clear, right? Mm -hmm. If I could say it that Well, the way. requirements across the country are different. I mean, I, I think Every, anybody who's going to delve into this right now is going to already know the standards that they need to teach and they're going to be willing to I, do what I do, which is make the standards fit. You know, it's like, oh, okay, this is, I can make the standards fit, right? We're mm -hmm. all coming from a different expectation of that. Um, I think you're right, Paul. I don't think it's necessary. I, I think you'd be wasting time trying to align standards when California is different than New York, then it's different than, you know, I mean, Teachers are going to figure that out. We all do. And especially English teachers where writing is writing and, and we're going to try and come at it with a lot of ways. And I also see this as an advantage in another way of pitching this to my history, because we did something interesting in the spring that I think I'll know on Friday. We're having our st staff meeting on Friday um, where we're going. But we started pairing English teachers with science, with history and doing some um, everything that we did was a collaborative unit, collaborative unit. So I see playlists being really powerful in that and bringing in the departments that way. And I'm wondering if other people across the country will be doing the same, especially in high school when you're thinking about what kids need to cover and access and really we're focusing on paring down the standards i'm not sure how you guys are looking at that but we're really looking at what are the key things that must be taught because we do feel that we're going to have kids missing big chunks of time and we don't want to be reactionary so we're going to say this is the bare bones standard and then how can we integrate assignments so students can access that just a thought Paul, oh, when you said choice, making um, choices uh, rather than requirements, or thinking about choice yeah. in addition to requirements, um, it, uh, um, the, so what we're thinking about at Harvest um, uh, is um, what do the kids need? Like, I think because we already have a That's set of standards to what Janet said, right? But yeah, but say it again. What do you, the kids need? What do you mean? Right. So meaning we have it, meaning not so much about the standards, but I'm going to have incoming ninth graders. So um, they're going to be like, I want to serve their need to know, do I belong here? Is this the right place for me? Um, how safe should I feel in this class? Um, who are you? Um, uh, so, yeah, so then, it, it, uh, that's 
starting from there, that's why poetry, that's why um, uh, um, poetry of place, um, the three playlists that are about poetry of place. That's why um, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, I, I just want to announce that we will continue this next week. Um, and, and so that we can kind of get to a, a kind of finish point here. Um, I, if, if it's not clear yet, I, we do, we mentioned a couple of weeks ago and we went through some of Chris's um, AP composition and literature um, class. I would love to see that laid out kind of as a course of some sort as, so that we're more clear what the, ex, what the choices are. And, and working with your um, poetry class would be kind of a, a simple thing, relatively simple because we have so many playlists kind of already set up for that. Um, I would love to see yeah. how people are incorporating that, like a 12 week, like, you know, let's pretend we're a semester, right? And we're, I, I'm planning on really honestly, so the semester is 16 weeks, right? I'm thinking to myself, I'm planning for 12 and having some kind of repetitive time because I really feel like there's gonna be that much trajectory <laughs> of kids coming in, out and done. So I'm trying to be thinking about that where I'm, so less is more. And then if I have more time, yay, we can always throw in something else as teachers, but I would love to see how people are kind of laying out that 12 week time. And where do playlists fit into that in our variety of settings? And I'm willing to start, I'll know more on Friday about what my role is and what we're doing. So I'll have, be able to speak to my, my setting a little better next week, hopefully. That feels like a really nice frame for next week. Um, like, what? Yeah, what's your twelve weeks going to look like? Is that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just kind of what are you what are you thinking? Knowing it's going to be chaotic and knowing it's, but we we talk. I mean, Paul, you and I originally were talking. You know, I'm going to have this laid out because one of the things when I think from an administrative level is is that you have something that rolls out on Sunday night, right? That's digital. That's going to be taught whether it throughout the week, whether you're there or not, that kids can have constant access to it. I still believe we need to have that unit piece. I think- yeah, I would push to that being two weeks, but- Yeah, I mean- I'm just quibbling. Right, yeah. but yeah. you know, like having it, the reality, I'm thinking about my reality of like how I roll, but- Oh, I know, yeah. I mean, it should be laid out for all the whole unit. I mean, really, should be, the plan should be that way. And then you're, because what I've been hearing from parents, from families, their biggest frustration is that we don't know what to do or things aren't coming out on time. And I think a lot of that was our peddling. So I think we're in a powerful position as teachers of writing to put some things out there that say, here's what I'm going to do. Here's, here's this plan. Here's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And people are going to glob onto it because just like you, I won't, I just opened up my other computer. There are lit no joke. I counted when you guys were talking 30 emails from this morning on of different things pushing crap, you know? I mean, honestly, like this program, that program, do this. I, it may not be crap in the right context, you know? But it, just, it might yeah. not, but I don't know what it is. But crap in my head where I'm like, I can't even look at that. And I don't know who said that earlier that there, Anna, was that you? You're like, I just can't even. And that's how I feel. I'm sure you're right. It's probably really great stuff but I want to have control over what I'm doing with my kids. And I think the more I can mm. come in the next couple of weeks with here's my scaffold, I can push back if someone says, no, you're going to do blah, 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 because this is easy or to monitor. You know what I'm saying? Just a thought. I don't know what you guys are. No, thinking. I, 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 I'm nervous to make that point, but I'm glad you made it. it. Part of this is to be able to say, this is what we're doing. I don't have to do this other thing that you're, that the dis district is forcing us to do. Like we have to have a clear plan to answer that, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I could not go to even, you know, my school is extremely, I'm allowed a tremendous amount of freedom, but I'm thinking about my daughter, I'm thinking about other teachers that do not. And so I think having, having those plans is, is really important, really important. In New York, there's a movement, not a movement, but there's noises from the, um, DO, the Department of Education that there'll be one curriculum. Um, ah. 
<laughs> for the so well it's, it's crisis, so having, crisis management right i mean this is what they do yeah <laughs> sorry so having this having the course that you've um created is um yeah is a, that's a important package to push back with i want to give a shout out to jeff too he put together a nice slide deck with annotations about like thinking about playlists and badges and artifacts and it might just be helpful language i put it in the chat i'll repost it i had said it needed to access i just clicked on it so i just said oh, wow. and oh you could and i so, didn't have access either christina <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, well, just oh. request you're sending them straight to my drive just i could give you access when you go i'll just i'll get that email and i'll share it with you or you could make okay, it perfect. Much. That's what I did. So I just said, yes, please. <laughs> I did want to mention, circling back to, I showed Louise Balso's um, Google Doc playlist, right? And then all the playlists that are on that page are LRNG playlists, but there's no reason we can't on that page, you know, put a Google Doc playlist as well, right? But, but I think some of the concepts of playlists are important to hold on to. Mm -hmm. um, which is you can click one time and and kind of get a whole the whole thing in some way and it's student facing those kinds of concepts i think are important but yeah what might be interesting is after we share kind of everybody's thinking if there's one playlist that we feel like we're all going to be using how interesting would that be to see where that falls into the fall you know if that's something that we're all saying hey this is showing up as a trend let's all try this let's look and see where it goes is there a way to connect i mean i definitely want to use now comment a lot more and i know that's embedded in many of the playlists and the articles and the things that we've done so just a thought cool all right so, we have oh, pretty clear what we're doing next week the week after that what are we doing crystal <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, Paul, it sounded like uh, you had some kind of call to action there, and that was to maybe try to put together a little, here's what I'm thinking for my playlist kind of thing, just in a Google Doc, right? Yep. That sounds fair. All right. Um, so I may or may not be here next week. I'm going to be in New Mexico visiting my 101-year-old dad. So but you can still send us your doc. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I can That's still awesome. share that. Doc, sure. 101, you said? Yeah, yeah, we'll probably tip a few. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so, but the week after that, um, you know, Christina, you know all about these folks, the Vote by Design people. Yeah. Uh, um, Sam Ball, who's a uh, director at Citizen Media, yeah. Citizen Film. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> I'm blanking on the person from Stanford, Linda. Uh, I thought you do. Yeah, but anyway, uh, they're <laughs> approached. You're born, Chris, an hour ago. That he's going to. No, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, just messing with you. That, but, that, right. um, but uh, you know, another thing that's coming up this fall is a presidential election, as it turns out. And Lisa so, Solomon from Lisa Solomon. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Can we just um, say not soon enough? Just not soon enough. Yeah. So, um, the, I think. You know, I, I'm pretty sure I'll be um, doing stuff with my students about, uh, you know, writing around that election. And so these are some people who've thought of it in a different way. I think it's going to be interesting to think about uh, their approach. And um, so anyway, that'll be week after next. And it may be a little earlier because they need to do it, I think, 3 p.m. Pacific time. So. Yeah. Oh, on TTT, you're going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome. Okay, great. Yeah, and they're going to have more um, sort of teacher trainings too, or walkthroughs or whatever. Um, Is this coming up, design? I can get that in the newsletter. Yeah, what? vote by design. Uh, I'd rather not, you know, it's not going to be a training thing, you know. Uh, it's more it's a discussion. I'm more curious about what, why they're doing it that way and what they hope to accomplish. Great, great. Okay. Cool. And can you vote for anybody or not? No, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> no. No, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Um, thank you all. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Nice job, everyone. Take care, all. Take care. Now. Yeah, stay safe.